We can do a quick wrap up of what we just showed, the three different technologies that you were, uh, we können es ja auch auf Deutsch umschalten. Genau, können wir auch. Ähm, <lacht> vielleicht können wir das ja kurz mal zusammenfassen, drei Bullets vielleicht. Genau, mhm. einfach nochmal drei Innovationen, insbesondere eben für die Kunden im Bereich Halbleitertests. Mhm. Wir haben zunächst einmal gesehen, neue äh, Testfunktionalität, mhm. neue softwaredefinierte Messgeräte, am Beispiel der SMU mit der mhm. Source Adapt Technologie, aber auch eben die Kooperation mit namhaften Herstellern in der Test- und Measurement-Branche, um deren Schlüsseltechnologien in PXI-Produkte mhm. zu integrieren. Und zu guter Letzt am Beispiel der per pin measurement unit eben, dass es auch möglich ist, klassische semiconductor at testfunktionalität auf die PXI-Plattform zu bringen. Super, dann mach, machen wir weiter. Und mhm. zwar bleiben wir im Bereich PXI und gehen in Richtung HF. Mhm. Und wir haben ja letztes Jahr, oder letztes Jahr, dieses Jahr, einige Akquisitionen im Bereich mhm. HF äh, gemacht. Und äh, vielleicht sollen wir, sollten wir mal den David Hall mhm. mal dazu rufen. Und, äh, Vielleicht macht es erst an der Stelle nochmal Sinn, dass wir uns nochmal kurz anschauen, einfach ins Gedächtnis rufen, ja. wie sieht so ein klassisches äh, RF-System Okay, das aus. heißt, machen wir den Vergleich erstmal mhm. Klassik und dann genau. die Zukunft. In die Zukunft, mhm. genau. Also wenn wir uns mal nochmal ja, ein typisches RF-Messgerät mhm. anschauen, hier am Beispiel von einem RF-Spektrum-Analyzer, mhm. dann sieht man, dass es einfach für einen ganz bestimmten Testfall realisiert worden. Mhm. Ich habe ein fixes, analoges Frontend und ich habe eigentlich als Endbenutzer überhaupt keine, keine Möglichkeit, da darauf jetzt in irgendeiner mhm. Form einzuwirken mhm. und die Testfunktionalität zu verändern. Mhm. Ähm, Software-definierte Ansätze sind dann natürlich äh, besser für geeignet. Die mhm. haben natürlich den Vorteil, dass ich zunächst einmal eine recht allgemein gehaltene Hardware habe, vektor signalanalysatoren mhm. generatoren ja, und in Kombination mit Software, das sagt der Name ja schon, Software definiert, also durch Erweiterungsbibliotheken und äh, Funktionen, kann ich eben ganz bestimmte Testsysteme realisieren, um mhm. beispielsweise WiMAX-Funktionalität abzudecken oder GSM mhm. und so weiter und so fort. Mhm. Ja. Okay, ja, wir haben ja jetzt auch einige klassische Messgerätehersteller, die auf diesen Zug mhm. äh, mit aufspringen, das mhm. wir schon seit 14 Jahren vorgestellt haben. Mhm. Allerdings ist die softwarezentrierte Vorgehensweise noch nicht ganz verinnerlicht worden von unseren Mitbewerbern. Aber nichtsdestotrotz, uh, David Hall, um, I'd like to welcome you to the stage to talk about um, RF software and also the acquisitions that we did this okay. year. David? Hey, David. Hey. hey. Good to see you, everyone. Welcome to Germany. Always so jolly and pumped up. Ah, thank so you. let's talk about uh, software for yeah. RF and the acquisitions uh, that we made some months ago. Uh, where do we stand with it? Yeah, so this past June, National Instruments announced the acquisitions of two RF companies, Phase Matrix and AWR. So we'll talk about hardware in a moment, so let's first focus mm -hmm. on software. So one of the areas that AWR helps our engineers is that it gives them a set of tools to help integrate the design through test of RF products. So one of the ways that we're attempting to do this through mm -hmm. software today is by integrating measurement much earlier into the design flow than you were able to do before. Mm -hmm. So AWR, it's, I mean, we have all our measurement users, and it's a very specialized company, very esoteric, you know, yeah. H, uh, RF area. So maybe you can give us some details about what does AWR do? Yeah, so the two most popular tools of AWR are Microwave Office and Visual System Simulator. So Microwave Office is a PCB level, uh, component level design tool, which allows you to do things such as laying out traces mm -hmm. on a PCB, and then simulate the response of that mm -hmm. circuit. So it's mm -hmm. a circuit level tool. By contrast, Visual System Simulator is a system level tool. And in an RF system, that would allow you to connect components such as mixers, amplifiers, and filters all together, and then simulate the performance of that RF system. Wonderful. So we have the design uh, domain covered through this acquisition. Yep. Uh, and then we have our flagship product, Navier. So how are these two products working together? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. So the, the way that we're doing that, first of all, is through some tools in VSS to connect LabVIEW code. It's the LabVIEW integration node. Now, this is a feature that's not yet official, officially released. It'll be coming out in the next version of VSS. Uh, but what this tool does is allows us to get LabVIEW code into the VSS simulation diagram. Mm -hmm. OK, so should we want to see an example? Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So what Christoph is going to do is show us a VSS diagram. Now, the diagram that he's showing uh, actually has four blocks. We're first going to focus on the top line of code. So the first block at the top left is a block that calls LabVIEW, and effectively, it's creating an LTE baseband waveform. So an IQ waveform is coming out of that block, and it's calling LabVIEW effectively as a sub-VI. Now, the simulated waveform goes into the simulated amplifier. You can see the amplifier on the screen and notice that we've selected characteristics such as a 1 dB compression point, noise figure, and gain. So the waveform goes into the amplifier, and then the amplifier amplifies the signal, but also applies impairments. In this particular case, 
it's going to add distortion, much like an amplifier in the real world. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. at the output of the amplifier, mm -hmm. the waveform goes back into another LabVIEW integration node. This LabVIEW integration node calls a LabVIEW measurement VI, which is able to demodulate the signal and give us LTE measurement results. It's all a simulation, right? It's all in simulation but right now. But how about replacing the amplifier in the middle to a real hardware? Yeah, well, it just so happens that we have an amplifier in mm -hmm. our PXI system. And so that amplifier actually represents a uh, similar RF performance to the one that we're simulating. Uh, both amplifiers have the same 1 dB compression point and gain. And so what Christoph is going to do is run the simulation. And what you can see on the screen is that we're able to take the same waveform, generate it with a signal generator, connect the signal generator to our real amplifier, look at the output of the real amplifier with a signal analyzer, and compare both the simulated and measured results of, it, of a given amplifier. Wonderful. So I think we have these two worlds uh, coming together, and uh, they're working together not only in the simulation front, but also in terms of uh, the hardware that is integrated into it. So let's move on uh, to the next area. Last year, we introduced uh, 6.6 .6 gigahertz as our limit, limiting uh, bandwidth or limiting uh, frequency. So are we still there, or have we moved forward through these acquisitions, or what, ha what has happened there? Well, of course we've moved forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what Christoph is going to do is pull open the RFSA soft front panel. And, and what you can see is ac the actual LTE signal that we were generating before. Now, this signal is at a center frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. And you can also see the second harmonic of that signal, right around uh, uh, 4.8 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with our new RF signal analyzer, Christoph, let's change the stop frequency. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's going to change it to 14 gigahertz. And what that allows us to do is see the second, third, fourth, and even the fifth harmonic of the signal. Mm -hmm. So this is made possible through the introduction of a new signal analyzer, the PXI 5665. OK, so 6.6, .6, and then we move on to the next level. Are we, that's our threshold, or I think we also acquired Phase Matrix, another RF, very esoteric company. Yeah. So are we exceeding, in fact, the 14? gigahertz uh, to the next level with phase matrix? Well, uh, so phase matrix has some crucial RF and microwave technology. Uh, they're an industry leader in synthesizer design, as well as uh, their RF design capabilities to 100 gigahertz and beyond. So we anticipate going forward that we'll continue to be able to produce products together and increase the performance of our RF product portfolio. So from 6.6 .6 gigahertz to 26.5 in one year. Yeah. I mean, we are really serious about RF, aren't we're, we? We are very serious. Okay, thank you, and I'm very excited about next year. Uh, wonder how the jump will look like. Thank you, thank you David. Thank you.